Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to show you how you can use Magic Mirror to quickly and easily create uh, mockups on actual devices within Sketch. Now, you don't have to take this to Photoshop. You don't have to take this to any sort of pre-made package where it, it puts your photo onto this device. You can do this all yourself and have it updated dynamically within Sketch using this Magic Mirror plugin. So check it out. Let's get going right now. <music> So as you can see here in the last video, we had these sort of perspectives here, and this is going to be the finished product here. We have an image, and we have our mock-up on top of that phone image, and what's cool about this is that we have the glare and everything on top of it. So let's actually go ahead and delete this artboard entirely. Uh, let's go ahead and delete the layers, and let's recreate this from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new artboard. doesn't really matter the size here. I have that image uh, open in another window. I'm just going to paste it into our artboard. This is a Nexus 5 that I just grabbed off the internet. I actually don't have a great resource for finding these images. So if you know of one, please post it in the comments to help out. I just got this off of Google Images. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and zoom in really close on this image. Now what we can do here is we want to make our vector shape equal to the screen size of this phone. So we can hit our V key to open the vector tool and click once in the top right corner here. Now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to sort of guess down here because it's sort of tough to see. Um, we want this to look right, but it's not going to be perfect because we can't really see this totally, but that's okay. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and select there. I don't feel like this phone has that big of a chin on the bottom. Uh, so I think that should probably be about right. Now you can sort of guess the perspective here. You can sort of see it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and click here. Now keep in mind, if this isn't accurate and not correct, you can always adjust it later. It's not set in stone. So let's go ahead and select our final point here. And I can already see I'm a little bit off. So let's go ahead and select this one. And now let's zoom out of our phone. And it looks like this bottom right one could come in and down a little bit if we were to change this color to like white and increase the thickness or something, just a couple of points. We'd be able to see that, yeah, it, it definitely could use some work here. So these bottom ones need to be adjusted. Let's go ahead and do that now. Some images are going to be easier to work with than others. Um, so let's go up and over, up and over. That should be about right. And let's go ahead and likewise, this one needed to come down and down just a little bit. And most of this at this point is sort of just guessing here. So I'm um, just trying things and seeing if it looks right. Now that looks pretty good. Like I said, if it's not perfect, we can always change it later. Now another thing I want to do here before we use our command is I'm going to turn on the fill just so we don't have to do that later. So you can now see we have this sort of blank screen on this phone. Now let's go ahead and rename this layer and what we had named it before was phone layout. Uh, if you uh, didn't check out the last video, please watch the other video first where we show magic mirror because magic mirror allows you to create these perspectives. So to do so, we have an artboard named phone layout. Now we just need a layer named phone layout. Now we can do command shift M and what you'll get is your layout thrown onto that vector. Now, because this isn't the right rotation, we can adjust that using Magic Mirror's tools by simply doing Command Control Shift R. And it says nothing selected. So let me reselect this phone layer and do that once more. Command Control Shift R. There we go. And I'm going to turn off the border here because we don't want that. And as you can see, we now have our phone mocked up onto this device. And it looks really nice. However, we're, there's a total lack of reflections. It looks like an image pasted on top of a phone, and it's not that great. But we can easily change this to make this into something really nice. And now this image works really well for us because the screen's completely off and it has a nice glare to it. Uh, so if you're using an image with a screen that's on, it's going to be a bit more difficult and you're going to have to recreate that uh, glare yourself entirely using uh, gradient tools and things like that. But luckily for this one, we don't have to do that. So I can duplicate this phone layer, the image. I'm going to set it on top of uh, the phone layout. So as you can see, we now have our phone layout with our actual magic mirrored uh, sort of sandwich between these photo layers that are the same. 
Now what we can do with this is we can simply select a blending layer like soft light. And you can see we now have our image showing up underneath it. We can change the opacity to make the uh, glare look a little bit more reasonable. So we got like 47% here. Now, you'll notice what's weird though, is because we're overlaying this entire image on top of the same image, we're getting some weird color burn here. If we turn this off, you can see the background colors are being adjusted. It's not what we want. Uh, but luckily we have a vector layer here that's in the exact shape of the content that we want to have the glare applied to. So what we can simply do is we can, uh, let's turn this layer back on, we can simply select the vector layer here by right clicking and select use as mask. Now we're using the same vector layer as a mask and nothing else is being affected. We can come up back to our image and we can totally play around with it now and just see what sort of uh, gradient tools and things like that and make it look a little bit more real realistic. So we have some light coming on the top. You know, maybe that's a, a little bit more realistic here because uh, this gets so dark down here. Now another interesting thing you can explore is that in this real sort of world, the screen is slightly set into the phone device. It's really not pressed up directly against the glass. So in this example, it's sort of like it's the image is directly on the glass. We could do something a little bit further by even adding an inner shadow. Now you can see by, uh, let me zoom in, because it didn't really add a whole lot. But what it did add, uh, just check, let's zoom in here. Uh, okay, just check out this line right here. You might have to have it on the HD setting to see this, but if we toggle this, it is just adding a nice little softness that really makes it look inset a little bit. And we didn't really even have to do it. This is the default inset shadow. So, I mean, I'm sure if you spent some time playing around with it, you could get a little, maybe a little bit more dramatic with it, or maybe a little bit, but it just adds something that gives this a little bit more depth. So we've now, in no time at all, created a mock-up in Sketch without going to any other programs using our application here. And what's super cool about it is if our application changes, for instance, we make this red rectangle. Let's make this something totally not red. We can make it green. Now we do Control-Shift-M. You can see that these two updated. Now, the problem occurred here where this one did not update. Didn't update because when we made this a mask, it actually renamed this to mask for some reason. So we can actually come back here and rename this as phone layout, click off of it, control shift M, and as you can see, it's then updated there as well. So as long as your vector layer is named the same as your artboard, whenever you do control shift M, you're going to get it updating, and that is just awesome. So uh, this is one of my new most, very most favorite plugins for Sketch 3. Check it out. It adds a lot of potential to uh, creating just really nice mockups for your Sketch files. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.